a very good evening to one and all. Welcome to the guest lecture series 2021, an initiative by Technomanza VJTR. This is Nishant Patel, and I'm delighted to be your host for today. VJTR was established in 1887, and since then, it has continued its proud legacy of being one of the premier institutions in India. It has also produced some of the greatest personalities who have made their names not only on the national, but also on the global stage. Technovanza has been proficient in providing a platform and enlightening the young minds of our country. The COVID pandemic may have forced us to stay at our homes, but nevertheless, that didn't stop us from conducting online guest lecture series in the year 2020, 2021. Previously, we have been graced by the presence of some of the world's eminent personalities like Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam, Mr. Ratan Data, Mr. Vinod Dham, and many others who have shone coruscating light on bright young minds, thus guiding them to new, new areas of interest. Now, to continue the proud legacy of having some of the world's greatest dignitaries, I would like to introduce our guest for today, who has taught our generation the true meaning of the famous quote, Public service is more than doing a job efficiently and honestly. I'm honored to welcome the inspirational Mrs. Hari Chandana Dasi. Ms. Chandana is an Indian Administrative Service Officer currently serving as Collector and District Magistrate at Narayan Pet, Telangana. She started her career working in the World Bank before switching to BP Shell. Taking inspiration from her father, who was also a civil servant, she decided to prepare for the UPSC civil services examination so that she could have a better opportunity of serving the society. She cleared the UPSC examination in 2010. During her service, she has had one motto, don't shy away from the new. Whether it is introducing drone-based spraying for eliminating vector-borne diseases or using a robotic drainage desilting machine for eliminating manual scavenging, she has never shied away from innovation. She was influential in the creation of Dog Park, which is India's first park designed specifically for pets. For her exemplary work, she was named among the top 10 bureaucrats making India better by the Better India magazine. She was also named among the Eco Warriors of India by the Indian Express Policy. This small introduction may not do enough justice to your career, which also includes being shortlisted for the Prime Minister Prime Minister's Award for Excellence. Your imaginative mind and zeal for the service of the nation is praiseworthy. We are truly honored by your presence today. We'll have a Q&A session after the lecture. So please do leave your questions in the live chat below. So without further ado, handing it over to you, ma'am, for the lecture. Thank you, Nishant, and it's a pleasure to talk to the students of VJTI today. Uh, it's, it's so good to connect with you from so far off. So it's, it's a pleasure to talk to all of you today. And uh, uh, I'm so happy that all of you are continuing the legacy of education and not missing out on any of your uh, educational achievements or uh, uh, lectures uh, with this online platform. So it's a great way to connect and I'm sure you're using technology to the best of your abilities. So wish you, uh, I'll start with wishing you all the very best in all the careers that you are going to choose for in the future. And uh, I would, uh, I was, uh, I was given the topic of speaking about uh, being an IAS officer and the making of an IAS officer. But uh, I would say I have uh, cleared the UPSC exam uh, 12 years ago. So it's, it's been a long journey and an eventful one at that. So I would say most of this what I'm going to speak to you about today is not just pertaining to UPSC, but a generic uh, life uh, lessons, I can say, from my own experiences, which I can share with all of you today. And uh, it's, it's, a, it's a pleasure to inspire young minds. So that's, uh, that's uh, a very good uh, thought that uh, I can leave you with today. So hopefully this will help not just in your UPSC career paths, but in whatever career you choose to take up. 
So starting with that, uh, let me say that uh, uh, how I started my UPSC journey was quite a U-turn. Uh, like most of you, I had dreams of uh, becoming, uh, uh, earning a lot and uh, going abroad, traveling the world. So these were thoughts which I started out with. Then uh, uh, when I, I did uh, start my journey that way, I went to the London School of Economics, graduated, then uh, went on to do a private sector job, which was quite well paying. And then suddenly I decided to take a U-turn and come back uh, to India and uh, give the civil service exam. So this is uh, uh, why, I, why I'm giving you this context is that any career you choose or specifically the UPSC journey that you choose, the first step that you have to take is to decide. You have to decide that I want this and you have to decide that I'm going to pursue this in the best possible way that I can. And then you take, you take the first step towards that journey. So that decision point, most of you will be like, I will explore uh, this option. And I, I have like 10 career paths open to me today. So I might take up all these 10 career paths. But that does, life doesn't work that way. I would suggest narrow down. First, give it your best. Take one career path and give it your best. That, uh, if, if it fails, uh, there's always a window which opens when your doors close. So that's when you should take up the second step. So when you decide on something and you say that I want to do this in a uh, uh, very badly or like I want to do this to the best of my abilities give it your best shot then starts your journey and that is the most important step in your journey so when you uh, say that I have decided then the next thing comes about that how do I start this journey so then you have to, again, most of you know this has been taught to you, SWOT analysis, it's a very simple concept. So some of you uh, would have decided maybe in your first year of uh, college, some of you would have started in the last year of your college. So how do you decide which, uh, at what plane you are in? So you decide and you see that uh, this exam is being taken, then you decide on your optionals, what you want to take up as a subject and what is the uh, way that the exam has to be attempted. Most of you are uh, engineering graduates and all of you know the competitiveness of uh, how to take an exam. So how to prepare for it is not something I need to tell all of you. So it is, uh, you just analyze the positivities of the exam or which, which subject you're comfortable with, what is the uh, language you're comfortable with. So you decide on all these things and then you take the next step forward. So uh, this decision making is your SWOT analysis. You already know what is your background, what is your strength, what are your weaknesses. So play on them, work on them and then decide on what you have to choose. And another important thing in any uh, preparatory uh, exams or any kind of career path that you decide to take, talk to people who have uh, taken the exam or people who have uh, been attempting to take the exam. So you know the journey, you know the end result. And uh, many of uh, many people I have come across during the preparation journey think that it's, a, it's going to be a bed of roses once they clear the exam, it's going to be easy. It's not. Just like the beginning of any career, it is, a, it is a tough career choice. It will demand a lot of your personal time, your attention spans. It is not a regular nine to five job. So you have to compromise on a lot of things uh, uh, in terms of family for uh, these kind of jobs. But then that's, that's, that's where your decision starts. That's where you say, okay, I want this. But on the other side, uh, this job offers you the best possible opportunities of diversity of making an impact in a very short period of time. Also uh, giving you that personal satisfaction that you are not just working for uh, yourself alone, but you are working towards the betterment of somebody else. It can be one person. It, I mean, your job can impact one person at one point of time or 100 people at another point of time. So that is the impact that this job has. And that was what led me on this journey to take up uh, the civil services exam. And uh, I should also share that I could crack the exam in my first attempt uh, working in a private sector job. So you'll hear a lot of uh, 
people telling you out there that um, uh, no i i have to study 16 hours a day for one year for five years for two years uh, to crack this exam let me tell you that each of you is different every one of us has different capabilities some of us can read a book very fast some of us read it very slowly so it depends on your time and your strengths like i said again uh, that uh, that will take a lot of time for you to crack this exam so if you are uh, a person weak in something or uh, a person who is not uh, uh, well versed with reading fast writing fast or you have a bad handwriting these are things you need to work on and you need to improve upon but it necessarily does not mean the end of the road for you so you have to take it in that spirit and you have to say i will work on my uh, deficiencies and i will move forward that is when your uh, second step of the journey starts and that is stay positive throughout the journey there's nothing called uh, super intelligence that gets you through any of the exams it is always super efficient preparation i would say so a uh, go to uh, uh, work towards that aim and all of you will succeed i'm i'm not going to tell you which subjects to choose for or which is going to be your uh, uh, optional how do i attempt the prelims how do i attempt the mains or how do i attempt the interview these are things you will learn in the course of uh, uh, the uh, game but what you need to do is first have one number one the attitude continue the attitude of positivity and think that i want to make a difference i want to make an impact i want to make make some change so that is where what uh, is your starting point for this journey and secondly i would also tell you that there is strength in group preparation uh many people think that you know i i want to study alone i'm a i'm a loner i cannot study but uh knowing uh, uh, the way i prepared was i banged a lot of my friends and uh, colleagues around me not a lot large group a very small selected group who uh, helped me with the exam because i was working in the private sector i could not uh, uh, attempt the uh, exam while going to coaching classes and so on so it's not necessary that you need to go to coaching classes do intensive uh, 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 training for one year or two years before you crack the exam i what i did was again like i said i was intelligent i borrowed off my friends many of my friends supported me with their material with the uh, the strategies on how to prepare and they were all serious uh, uh, candidates who were preparing very seriously for the exam so i learned from their experience maybe from their failures also and uh, uh, learn to work on them and see that i don't repeat those mistakes and uh, the problems that uh, the others faced so that also helped me quite a lot in cracking the exam in the first round and the day you decide this is one exam which demands that you are aware of all your surroundings of things which are happening around you so if you are a person who thinks okay i i only know movies i only know uh, pop uh, music and uh, i i know my college and my friends i don't know the world around me that is not going to work so you need to think on issues you need to think on issues which are happening around you for example today uh, corona is there it's impacting all of us uh, but it is impacting each of us differently all of us have to think so you just have to think about not just things uh, which impact you or your immediate family but how things are going around in the world this helps uh, this is your current affairs awareness and that is the most crucial part of being a civil servant you have to figure out what works for a lot of people out there and how you can help them how you you can change things for them and how you have to manage things uh, when it comes from an administrative perspective so you have to be aware of your surroundings and if you are not a person who says i'm not aware of current affairs i'm not aware of what's happening out out there in the world please change that that is one important thing for cracking the exam and also once you start thinking of issues around you 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 start developing opinions you start having uh, 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 debates on those issues maybe within your own mind or with your own friends just just keep on speaking about these issues then you will have a perspective 
that is more important for for a civil servant and that is something which all your interviews and uh, your uh, mains exam looks for you they look for a person who has empathy who has uh, uh, caring and who is also uh, attuned to their surroundings and make uh, make a immediate decision based on the given surroundings so these are things you need to work on and uh, you can uh, uh, strategize your uh, preparation strategy to that level and another uh, important thing is many people ask me as uh, civil services aspirants is that uh, are we hear that the upsc is a lot of luck uh, it's not it's the, maybe i would say it's 90% uh, hard work and 10% luck so you make your own luck try to work towards uh, working out your strategy well prepare well give it your the best shot there are many times you say okay circumstances uh, didn't help didn't uh, uh, come i mean they came in the way of me doing the great attempt that's fine there are many people who try for five six times there are people who try for one who get to one attempt it doesn't matter again at by the end of the day when you are a civil servant it is all the same you might have attempted five times somebody else has attempted one time but you're on the same batch and you're all doing your own work each one has their own individual space each one is doing their own thing so this is the same in all the careers don't don't get into a rat race kind of a, uh, mentality right in the first uh, uh, instance when you are preparing you have to get good marks you have to be ahead of the curve all these are true but you don't have to push down somebody for it and each one has their own uh, capabilities many people bring their own capabilities to the board so it doesn't mean that you are the best of the lot it's just that there are many people who are getting through let me be one of them if that is the attitude that you have you will definitely be there so try for that and uh, that that definitely works in the civil service so don't think that i i i've just uh, i just have to cut down my competition i don't have to talk to anybody that's not true the more uh, you are a team player the more you can take along a team the more you interact uh, with others it gives you much more uh, many more perspectives and much more wider vision of the world so do interact with people talk to them have small groups and uh, uh, work out your strategies on how to crack the exam and uh, again like i said one important thing is you make your own luck that means you have to think that this is the only option that is available to me let me give it my best shot mm-hmm. i know all of you are super intelligent you have different career paths you come from a great college so you will have a fall back option but give it one or two years of your life and it definitely uh, works for you because if you give everything your whole and soul to it i have not found anything in this world which does not happen if you don't give your whole and soul so try to do that and that definitely is one success mantra which can uh, work out in any profession that you want and that that is something which will come to you from all the top ceos of the world also if they believe their own cause if they believe their own paths that they are taking that that gives you enough confidence to uh, crack anything and uh, like i said i gave it my whole and soul i couldn't know, i i probably couldn't give 16 hours a day but i could give maybe 5 or 6 hours which were quality 5 or 6 hours a day of my time for uh, preparing this exam and i could get through this was what i had done throughout my career also when i was preparing for the london school of economics that time and also when i got my scholarship all these times i have uh, uh, worked towards that direction and uh, i i could uh, manage to crack all these exams because of that so give it your best believe faith whatever faith you are from just have believe on in yourself first and say that yes i can do it but i'm going to give it my best somewhere down the lane people who have failed are always people who have not given their maybe 200% to the uh, game so do that and all of you will be super successful and there will be always lastly i would just like to say there will be always detractors there will be always people laughing at you they will there will be people saying ye tujhse nahi hoga but that trust me those those people don't matter 
ultimately it's what you believe in that matters if you let those people uh, convince you that you are not good enough if the if you let them convince you that you come from a background which does not allow you to do this that's that's your first stepping stone to failure so if you are listening to such negative comments if you are listening to them and letting them even affect you subconsciously you yourself are losing the game uh nishant was mentioning that uh, i had started the pet park so i'll just give you an example of that uh, when i started a, a park for pets in uh, uh, hyderabad i was supported by just uh, two people the entire uh, group of people my colleagues everybody were laughing at me they said this doesn't work and there were people like kutte ko kon park banayega so there were many people who had said that to me and they said it will be an utter failure especially in a city like hyderabad uh, but uh, then we said there are a few people who have we did an analysis and there were many pet lovers who said uh, they want uh, a kind of infrastructure for them so we decided okay let's give it a try it was a gamble in in some ways but the gamble paid off and once we did it now this model is replicated across the country all the cities are trying to do this so uh, one year down the lane this idea is a huge success but when we thought of this idea initially there were so many detractors so had we been scared of it and me as a public servant i have to spend public money for it so if i have if i am thinking of uh, doing something which which will not work and which will go against public welfare it it was a huge gamble but we did it and it it became very successful and when we started using drones for uh, uh, a lot of civic activities first we started with spraying our lakes uh, trying to use drones and uh, we wanted to uh, eradicate mosquitoes with that so it worked really well because otherwise it was taking a lot of manpower a lot of people had to go into the middle of a lake to clean the uh, lake so it was very easy for us to use a drone sprayer and send it out into the lake it was saving on cost it was saving on manpower but then again at that time uh, our drone policy was very nascent so when we started this initiative there were, there were again lot of doubts expressed can we do this will it go into some wires will it go into some houses will it affect privacy so there were lot of issues when we started that but again uh, again we said uh, we still have to work towards the larger good which is uh, uh, working on uh, mosquito menace and we started it so it 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 proved to be a huge success and later one step one step ahead now we have the drone policy which allows uh, this uh, usage in all the civic uh, uh, infrastructure and also in all all your uh, private uh, affairs so down the lane maybe sometimes you are thinking ahead of the curve whenever you are uh, planning your life or your uh, career path but it's only the person who thinks ahead who who can actually succeed and deliver so do that have a have a goal path have a plan and work towards it give it your best shot and sometimes there are many many times when you'll fail but don't be afraid of failure failure is just another stepping stone to success because uh, i always remember einstein when i uh, talk about failures all of you are engineers so you will relate with this very well einstein failed thousand times before he discovered electricity so he his his famous comment was that i i i knew thousand ways of not doing this and one way of doing this right so that that gives you the confidence so don't be afraid there will be a lot of uh, uh, people who will be telling you that this won't work and there might be times when you think you are frustrated you can't work on it but just stay positive keep a group of positive people who can motivate you around and uh, that you can uh, really succeed on your path whatever you choose to so i i'm i like to keep it short and maybe take more questions from all of you but uh, uh wishing you uh, again all of you a bright bright careers ahead and i'm sure all of you will take some takeaways from this and uh, use it to your own careers and your career paths 
specifically regarding the civil services like i said i i am i have given the exam 12 years back so the pattern has changed sufficiently uh, there are a lot of changes now which uh, i'm sure all of you online can uh, check and uh, see how uh, the patterns have changed and how you can play your strengths towards uh, meeting the uh, demands of the exam but i was generally speaking about uh, life goals and how your attitude should be towards attempting this exam and trust me uh, any person who decides to take the civil services as a career it's definitely worth it it's very satisfying in terms of the job you want in terms of what you want to do with your life and in terms of uh, uh, trying to give you satisfaction i would say that is the best thing that you get from this job because you are not working for yourself alone there are a lot of times when you think my career in the private sector would have been good i am actually working right now at 1/12th of my salary uh, which i was earning in the private sector but it still gives me a lot of satisfaction in the way that uh, uh, a small uh, uh, i mean we a poor farmer i mean i have people like poor farmers and women uh, from the most rural areas coming and thanking me because uh, i could make a very significant impact on their lives and change it for the better so that gives you uh, that if if that is your aspiration if that is what you want to do then civil services is a good choice for you if if not and if you think i am a different type of person choose your career path follow the same goals it's the same choose your path work towards it and work hard uh, put it put in your 100% towards that and definitely results will follow so uh, with that i i will uh, close this uh, session from my side and i would uh, love to take questions from all of you on uh, how to go forward Thank you, ma'am, for such an insightful lecture about the making of an IAS officer. I'm sure this talk must have enlightened the young minds of VJTI and will help them in their future endeavors. We'll now begin the Q and A session to answer a few of our audience questions. So, my first question for you is: You work at the prestigious World Bank as a project consultant. perhaps a dream for many of us how did you have the hunger and motivation to start from ground zero preparing for the upsc like i said it was a uh, difficult nishan but i made a very personal choice i was here uh, on a holiday and uh, i was at home one day uh, when a very poor farmer from one of the most interior places of telangana had come to meet my father and uh, he had come to him after 20 years so 20 years back uh, he had given him uh, uh, some lands under the land allotment policy which was there by the government at that time and uh, uh, and because of that he could settle his family he had a sustainable income and now his lands were worth quite a lot so he came to thank him so that kind of an impact where you change your uh, uh, change the lifestyle of a whole family that that got me thinking i got thinking that i was when i was with the uh, private sector i was also with bp shell for a while and uh, when i was uh, there i was working for myself probably for my company but uh, i was not making a larger impact anywhere else and i thought uh, that uh, maybe my career lies in that where i can do this also another thing which i um, always tell about the civil services is even if you don't want to help people the diversity of the job keeps you on your toes it just keeps on challenging you like i have moved uh, from a totally urban administration i was handling municipal administration for hyderabad city and uh, i was doing uh, a, a totally city postings before i came here and narendpet is 98% rural so i could i could work in a city i could work uh, in this uh, place and uh, both these areas i could i could have different types of satisfaction i worked on environmental issues in hyderabad i have worked on uh, 
social issues there uh, which were more of civic nature like creating infrastructure building bridges building uh, huge infrastructure but here i'm building social infrastructure i'm motivating women i'm talking to uh, i'm one of the initiatives that i'm doing here is trying to give um, a group of women around 4000 of them a better uh, opportunity so we are trying to give them teach them marketing skills teach them uh, uh, more uh, skills to have a diversified income so that that these are the satisfactions that you get from this job that is really inspiring ma'am now uh, moving on to the next question can you describe a time in your upsc preparation where you really understood why this is one of the toughest examinations in the world it is definitely the toughest examination in the world because uh, i i think i have seen exams across uh, many places and uh, uh, i would say one thing it is tough in your mind and it is tough because it's it's a long process it's a long drawn process like your neat or your engineering je it's one shot one exam which decides your fate but these are like three exams or four exams which decide your fate in upsc so many people think it is uh, tough and like i said you have to have the attitude to sustain it you have to keep on keep going for the entire year throughout the exam that is more important for upsc and it's also a test of your patience but trust me you will value the patience once you get into the job because that is required in dealing with a lot of people that you deal with in the job and also the kind of situations that you face the pressures that you face so if you can face the exam you can face life as an is officer that must have been a fascinating experience ma'am so well the next question is uh in the number of projects undertaken in your career can you describe one where you had to be much more flexible than you initially expected there are many times where you have to change your uh, course of action in the job so it's always be ready to course correct there are many times which new circumstances will come up and you can't do something like uh, i mean i started the waste management journey in hyderabad and it was very slow going initially it was frustrating also for the first 3 months nobody believed in waste management or recycling all these things so we were literally struggling against the tide uh, but then uh, again you try to figure out okay something did not work out we tried to initially put fines on all the citizens who were not segregating but that did not work so we moved to the carrot approach where uh, we try to tell people to you know motivate them in different ways about uh, segregation how it will uh, help out so we tried putting waste uh, recycle tiles we we put uh, architecture of uh, recycled materials so that people got thinking about this attitude and slowly slowly things change so sometimes things are slow sometimes they are very fast you can do it in like dog park i did it in 6 months so <laughs> it depends on project to project and the work that you take up and uh, civil services is always uh, taking along a lot of factors first your team because you are a team leader most importantly i am not the engineer i am not the uh, financial expert but i am the person who is leading the team so i have to uh, first ensure that my team comes along believes along uh, in the idea with me and then also convince the larger actors you have politicians you have uh, people you have public so you have to take all of them along all right well this gives us an insight on how the job requires an incredible amount of flexibility so moving on to the next question uh, can you give your views on how the pandemic has persuaded the government to renew its focus on basic health care and has perhaps improved it significantly absolutely we have actually now i think in the last two years that i have seen we have uh, spent uh, more on health than any other uh, sector uh, but uh, health is very important and uh, mostly i i found that we didn't have enough rural infrastructure we have excellent urban infrastructure 
and most of our healthcare was concentrated in pockets urban pockets uh, or nearby towns and all so now we have moved to the rural areas also and we've seen that uh, they are more equipped to deal with the health pandemic so in a way it has been yeah it's been good i hope it sustains and we learn to diversify more that's a great outlook ma'am so my next question for you is uh can you share your most memorable experience as an ias officer um my, my most memorable experience has been working in naren pet i'm uh, still doing this uh during the pandemic it's a very interesting story um this is a weaver town naren pet which i'm there it's it's famous for its handlooms so when uh, i was having the pandemic the first phase of the pandemic was going on uh, there was a total national lockdown so the weavers could not sell their stock anywhere in the world so they were having a lot of dead stock and they kept on uh, a few of them came to me and they started crying they they like we don't know we are at loss what to do so that was a very shocking thing and uh, we decided okay let's take a risk and we bought all the stock of the weavers and we made it into masks that was way back in march uh, uh, last year so at the start of the pandemic when nobody else was doing that all your factories were also shut down so we just decided we'll, we took all the women self help groups of this area and we asked them to start making these masks so thinking on your feet is very important in these kind of jobs uh, so when uh, we did that uh, i could provide employment to about 4000 families the women could get about uh, 400 500 rupees per day the weaver got the same amount because we bought the stock from the weaver and we sold all these masks uh, out in the market in the various medical shops and uh, various places also we took bulk orders from different companies so it was it was a very lucrative business for them at that point of time so after that we decided that uh, i took the initiative forward and uh, we have created a company for this woman so imagine a company managed by sg women so more from the most rural areas and we're teaching them managerial skills we have they have a board now and the board is managing their affairs and they do they do sell a lot of their handicrafts and handloom products all of you can also have a look at it i'll share the links with uh, you it's called arunya it's arunya narayan pet so it's there on insta and all these uh, handles also so it's it's been a very inspiring journey and uh, i feel very satisfied that you know these women from the most rural areas who have never stepped out of their homes have had the confidence to start marketing their products uh, to have a company they pay their taxes they do their gsts and everything right now so it it, it is it is a very satisfying experience well that is a tremendous experience ma'am so uh, now moving on to the next question everyone has one or more role models whom we look up to while moving forward in our lives so we would be excited to know who have been your role models in this incredible journey you had and why i've had a lot of uh, respect for strong and compassionate women i uh, it's not just one person i can say who's impacted me it's the entire journey you can say uh, from from people who have shattered the glass ceiling like mari curie and uh, kalpana chavla for uh, uh, or even uh, a woman inspiring women leaders like thatcher golda meir all these people so there are a lot of uh, people who have risen above the tide and who have uh, challenged the norms of their time so these are all uh, women i have looked up to and i i would say a lot of inspirations not just one that is truly inspiring ma'am and you have been a role model for us so now moving on to the next question can you please give your insights on how india can somehow modify western style urban planning such that it suits our society better we are already doing that <laughs> we don't need to change much more i think uh, we are uh, pretty insightful in the way uh, i'm sure many of you have heard of concepts like uh, two bedroom housing in the urban areas i think even in mumbai dharavi they are planning this right now where the uh, poor housing is there which is not there in many of the western countries that i have worked in on i have visited also so we have our own unique indian way of uh, uh, managing things and that is how we are doing it 
so hopefully we should uh, learn to do better and in fact i can tell you some of us are doing much better in uh, uh, i mean uh, tell me how many uh, our biggest network of raddi walas our uh, people who collect the waste it's it's happening now in the west but it has happened much more it started from the 70s in india so all of us ha- we have our own unique perspectives and we should use them most of us use uh, this network in uh, of civic planning in urban areas which probably this network will not be there in western countries right is an interesting view point ma'am so this brings an end to an impactful session also thank you to our wonderful audience for tuning in we hope you all enjoyed the session i am dishan patel signing off until next time this is technomanza vjtr